The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Welcome to Ion Oshkosh. Cheryl Hens along with Dan Rylance here. And uh, if you've been reading the paper or listening to any local news lately, you know that for uh, the last several weeks, um, there's been a whole bunch of organizations throughout the city and uh, community at large working on a visioning project. The official name uh, is the Vision Oshkosh Project. And it is funded by, as I said, a number of uh, agencies and organizations in the community. Uh, we're going to find out just what's involved in it, uh, what the vision is, um, if they know it yet, and uh, what, what they've been up to and where they're going from here. So uh, to tell us the answers to those questions and so much more, uh, we're pleased to be joined by um, Wendy Hillsburg to my left. Wendy is the executive director of the Oshkosh Convention and Visitors Bureau. And uh, next to her is a familiar face as well, Eileen Conley Keesler, who is, you know, I've seen your title different things, president, executive director, but you head up the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation. Correct. What's your actual title? It is actually president now, but it was executive director for okay. a lot of years. So, so everything mm -hmm. is correct, basically. Oh, <laughs> it's it's Executive director, if you're stuck in a time warp, and <laughs> <laughs> so, all of the above. Yeah. So anyway, thanks so much yeah, to both of you for yeah, being thank here. Thank you for having us. Um, I guess let's start at the very beginning. How did this come to be? Where did the idea or the concept come from for this project? Well, actually, this um, idea of visioning has been bounced around for mm -hmm. several years in Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing about it for many years, people saying we should do a vision mm -hmm. so people can maybe get on the same page on where we want the city to go and give the council some direction on what people want in the community. But it really came to be about 18 months ago, our community foundation in Oshkosh, along with two others in the state of Wisconsin, were chosen to um, be involved in a national project called CF Leads, Community Foundation Leads. And what they asked us to do was to take a problem and mm -hmm. bring that problem and our peers and these professionals will help us figure out where we have to go. The problem that we took is we thought or felt that th that people were concerned about pride in their community here in Oshkosh. There's a lot of comparing to Appleton and Nina and mm -hmm. other places and feeling like people just really didn't take pride in what we have. We have a lot in Oshkosh. So one of the suggestions um, that was brought forth was, why don't you do a visioning process and see if you can get people to give some input and start looking at all the great things that this community has. Mm -hmm. So, you know, although it had been talked about for a long time, um, we kind of decided to push that. So we started talking to partners like the Convention Visitors Bureau mm -hmm. and the Chamber and the City and said, you know, maybe the time is right for us to look at doing something to mm -hmm. help us figure out where we go in the future and what people want and to get as much input as possible. Because another thing you hear out in the community is people feel like there's 10 people who make all the decisions in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do we get people involved? So that's where it started. Mm -hmm. um, and so our partners came together and said, great, let's, let's do it. The interesting thing with that though is she, we had, she had the idea, but we didn't have any money. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to have. We don't either. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask us for yeah, We have lots you know. of ideas. <laughs> so like, here we go. We don't have any money. <laughs> We're, we can talk about it. Everyone says, yeah, that's a great idea. But to come up with the actual dollars, because yeah. this was not inexpensive. What's the budget um, on this? Well, we're also following this up with a branding. So once the vision comes through, we're going to try to brand Oshkosh. Okay. So I think yeah. the whole budget for that, about $130,000. Okay. And who are the major contributors? Oh, um, the Chamber, okay. the Northwestern, City of Oshkosh, okay. Foundation, Convention of Visitors Bureau, the University, Propel, um, Lutheran Homes, okay. and Mercy. So public and private money. Correct. Public and private. Okay. So go ahead. You were on a roll with so saying something. And well, my role was um, the idea is there, but let's put your money where your mouth is. Okay. And we finally had the money because we, okay. we did this a year ago, 
no, but we didn't have any money. Uh -huh. So now we've got the money, and so now on your market set, go. How did you guys bring all these entities together? Because that's a lot, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's a lot of organizations in the area. How did you bring them all together? Um, well, some were together because a couple years ago we did look at branding for the community. Mm -hmm. So um, the chamber, the university, the foundation, the CBB were already at the table talking about that. And then when we decided to do this, we just started talking to some people out there. I mean, some people chose not to participate, and others did. The Northwestern said, great. Lutheran Homes actually called me when she, they heard me talking about it at a different event that we want to do this. They wanted to make sure that, that elder were represented. Mm -hmm. And so they called and asked. So, you know, it just was a case where we went out, talked to people. You know, you want to be part of this? And I think once people got wind of what was happening, um, some people came to us and said, we've got a little bit of money, can we, can mm -hmm. we be at the table? Mm -hmm. So it just kind of blossomed. Did they, obviously this takes money, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Wendy. Did they have to bring money to the table in order to participate? Yes. Okay. At the, on the steering committee level, mm -hmm. not the rest of the levels. Okay. But, the stu you know, you, yeah, they had to have some money mm -hmm. at the table to want to be there. To fund what you what yeah, you do exactly absolutely. So, uh, are there maybe elements in our society that uh, you know you said that uh, Lutheran Homes wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. elder care issues mm -hmm. were, were represented and, and and met in some way? Um, are there maybe elements in the community that haven't been brought into this? We we talked about that. I mean, we even actually brought out a list of, of voids, and we kind of <coughs> um, read the demographics of the community people, but. We've reached out into, um, we went to Bethel, um, so we brought the program to them. Mm -hmm. We went out into the younger generations, um, Propel, because okay. uh, we thought if some, we knew, we knew who was actually in the audience taking the survey. We don't know who was online, because that's, you mm -hmm. don't know the demographics right. of that. Right. But we just kept pushing it and pushing it to try to just get everybody, um, it, school districts, um, students, universities, so we really tried to diversify the group. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're pretty confident then that that every aspect of of the continue every aspect on the continuum of life, if you will, is probably being addressed in one way or another by some organization that's a part of this. That was so our intent. Tried. That was the intent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll hear about it eventually if, I, if you failed. I, I'm <laughs> sure. I mean, when you do something of this magnitude, there are going to be some people who feel yeah. left out. Yeah. And as much as we've advertised this, because maybe they weren't at the, st at the steering committee level because they mm -hmm. don't have dollars to bring, mm -hmm. but to be part of the rest of it, I mean, I, I don't know what else we could do unless you wanted to take more money to advertise. Right. And, right. you know, we couldn't. So, uh, The keynote person, who is he? Uh, what was his task? Is his task over with or is he still part of it? We did an RFP nationwide. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually um, heard from our other partners, so there were other um, foundations that did this, there were other Convention and Visitors Bureau, mm -hmm. other destinations, so we got some leads of people that, mm -hmm. that we thought would be interested. I think we sent out about 20 RFPs and received about five um, proposals, mm -hmm. and we actually went with him. Um, Who's him? To um, Tony Nelson. Thank you. Um, I think he's from New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay. Rutgers, mm -hmm. is that right or not? Is he from Rutgers? Yes, I think so. I believe so. Yeah. He talks so much, so it's hard to. <laughs> 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 He's very passionate about what yeah. he does, uh, and he's amazing. And he um, he has this. Um, what's the thing called that he puts up on the wall? He 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 trademarked the actual system that this works, okay. where it's a visual, where you actually see a picture of Oshkosh and what it could look like, what it couldn't. Really fits with the title vision, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because you're looking at visions. Yeah, and we mm -hmm. did a reference yeah. check on yeah. we did background mm -hmm. checks, we talked to, to other communities that we did, and this was the way to go. And um, I don't know if you've met him or if you've seen him, but no. he's very dynamic. Uh -huh. and now, is he through or is he still part of the... No, he's still part still of it. Part because of it. the survey is still going on. Okay. And it will actually kind of wrap up on May 31st. That'll okay. be the, the end of the survey period. And then he has to take all of this information and okay. figure out what it is that people in Oshkosh are saying. Okay. Then come back to the community. What so does a keynoter get on, on, on your budget? What's his stipend to come and do this? Um, well, he's like 48, 47,000. For the, his travel, whole company. The whole, okay. All of it. So if you're 110, 120,000, He's around fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Ninety, yeah, under that's fifty, under and then 50, the rest will be branding. Okay, that's so this is obviously a, a, cl a you know, a, a clean up hitter on, on your, on your mm -hmm. program. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. He's done projects that where he's um, been involved in a million dollar project. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> he so he'll be part rate. of the final report then too, obviously. Absolutely, yes. he'll be doing the final report. Okay. Well, the final report to the community will be 
um, on okay. June 22nd, and he will be okay. doing that. He's done some major destinations, mm -hmm. uh, larger metropolitan areas yes. than Oshkosh, so okay. um, he knows what he's doing. Okay. Like what? What has he done? Milwaukee was one of them. Okay. A um, lot of things on the East Coast, because he's from New Jersey. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of his cluster when you see it is East Coast, sure. but he's done some Midwest, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because the first snow. argument you're going to hear from some people mm -hmm. is, well, if he's done things on the East Coast, we're not the East Coast. Right. <laughs> you want to be the East yeah. Coast. <laughs> <laughs> we just want the, the we, we want those high rents and <laughs> right, high right. home prices and so forth. We want a pit coast. We want from the East yeah. Coast. Yeah. That's we want the right. water stuff. <laughs> um, now, we're, we're taping this on, on the 21st of May, and earlier today there was one session held. Um, at the, um, let me see here, Carmel Residence. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of more that are being held next week. By the time this airs, <coughs> those will be over. Um, over 2,000 surveys have been received mm -hmm. so far. Um, and it's um, still online at the Northwestern. Mm -hmm. If you go to um, the Northwestern.com, you can uh, take part in the visioning survey there. Um, I would encourage folks to do that. Um, how long will that be online? Till May 31st. Okay, so by the time this airs again, just disregard what I just said. <laughs> just forget it. Okay? We hope you did. We hope Never you mind. Survey. <laughs> forget it. <laughs> anyway, what have you learned so far from the 2,000 and some surveys that you've gotten? What's What's the response been? Well, we don't have the responses. Tony has those, yeah. or right now the North uh, Zoomerang has them, I believe. Okay. <laughs> Zoomerang, yeah, I think Zoomerang's a holding them. Yeah. They're, They're in a holding. They're in a holding, They're in a holding They're in a computer until based all the surveys are okay. completed, and then they will go to Tony, and okay. he will dissect okay. w what it is. You that can run a program on them and, and come out with what, what was answered on your survey. Correct. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're just compiling the information, gotcha. and then it all gets sent. So to you're here. just right. census takers at this point. Right. Know, we don't have the census. Right. Huh? But we were, we were really excited with the first um, meeting that came out to the community. He told us to anticipate maybe 100 people, uh -huh. if, and we, were, we had to move locations. I mean, what did we have? Three, um, three, the, the initial where the, just the concept was out. That where we had to stop it at 165. The one at the Hilton. Yeah, we stopped it. He wanted us to have like 60 to 100 in this um, uh -huh. citizen advisory group is what he called it. Like um, the, the, uh, a branch of the steering committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the next level. That's right. going to help us with these surveys out in the community. And he said typically you'll see 60, maybe 100 people come out for those. At 165 or 170, we had to stop. We had to wow. turn people yeah. away. Because it, it wasn't a functioning group. You couldn't manage right. a group. That was the one that was made. televised where he made his initial yeah. presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he was like, I mean, he's wow. like, wow, Oshkosh. Wow, you yeah. guys really care about this. Well, did he have some thoughts, uh, ladies, as to why? the response was so overwhelming? I think part of what he said to me at one point is, is people are hungry to give input. Oh. Um, and I think he at one point thought, you know, if you see 600 surveys come back, you've done well. I mean, that's typical in a community. And we're like, no way, 600 will never be enough for what we want to see. So I think he's mm -hmm. been a little taken back by yeah. our aggressiveness on trying to get these surveys done and the amount of people who are filling yeah. them out. You know, uh, not to be a downer here, but <laughs> th this does come up uh, mm -hmm. with any time anytime you hear a survey being done. People say, and, and the last time we heard it, I think, was uh, with respect to the school district. Mm -hmm. You know, they spend tens mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars or mm -hmm. whatever it may be on, on having some consultant do surveys, and then the frustration naturally is, Nothing gets done with it. You're not mm -hmm. listening to us. Why are we taking part in this if you're not going to listen to us? And it's money just, you know, blown away. Um, how can people be assured that that's not going to happen that's here? Question. That, that their vision is going to be heard and acted mm -hmm. as best as can be? Well, I think you have to look at the downtown master plan for one. Um, there was citizen input into that master plan when it was put together, mm -hmm. and that did not go to the shelf. And several projects, including the Leach and the Square mm -hmm. and the Convention Center, and these things that were in that happened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think there's an example, and again, several of these partners were at the table for that. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to let it die. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, after this is completed and we see what these results are, we need to sit with the council. Um, to determine what so this vision is going specifically to the Common Council well it's going to the community first okay and then then we the steering committee have to figure okay. out what pieces go where okay but, but certainly the council has to be a big piece of this okay. the city has to somehow see if they can adopt this into their comprehensive plan or okay. pieces of okay. it into their comprehensive plan where it works yeah. <coughs> some of it might be philanthropic 
Okay. You know, and, and hopefully will help steer the, the foundation in what this community wants to see happen with the philanthropic dollars. Again, you know, hopefully there'll be many partnerships where it's public-private, like we've been able to successful in lots of things now in the community by doing that kind of blend. So this vision is just panoramic. It could be almost anything. Well, I think it will huh? be... I think you're going to probably come up with five or six things that are okay. very clear. Okay. This is what this community is asking okay. for, you know, with really large percentage okay. numbers. I think there'll probably be a lot of the questions that'll just be kind of <laughs> anywhere from minus 10 to sure. plus 10, sure. where you go, the community doesn't really have a strong feel about that. Yeah. I'll be very disappointed if we don't get a couple pieces out of this where it was very strong. Uh -huh. I think we're going to prioritize issues. I think yeah, everybody, we'll look at it. everybody yeah. that took the survey has issues with sure. some things, but let's just see how how strong the issues are and mm -hmm. where the major focus should be, and that's where we should start. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine if, if he's going to give us 25, it, you can't tackle that. No. So mm -hmm. it, it, you can kind of weigh each issue and figure out where the passion is and where mm -hmm. people want to move it. But but the whole point, it's a very good question. It, you have to have buy-in. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, right. and, he will give us a plan. He is going to give the steering committee a way to get buy-in and actually a documentation. And the fact that the city is on board and we have the council members have been able to take the survey, um, we hope that won't be as hard. Mm -hmm. All right. Have you, uh, since you brought up the council, let's yes. go there. <laughs> have you had conversations Don't be so with, eager. Uh, <laughs> with uh, our new mayor yet? He was at the visioning um, process hmm. when it was at the convention center. He and several of the council members had attended those. Mm -hmm. he, you know, I think he, he has said to me, you know, if there's something really loud and clear in this and if someday we want this to go to a referendum, he will support any referendum that uh, would need to go. Like, let's assume it's bike trails. Let's just say if that mm -hmm. was a big thing. Mm -hmm. And that's a $5 million project. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know, how do you pay for that? Can you pay for that out of public, private? I don't know. But if it's something that would have to go to a referendum, I think he said he would support referendums. Now, that doesn't sound like much buy-in on the part of a mayor. Well, I don't think he's me. seen the plan yet. I think. Well, I know, but, you know, you know, he'd support it going to a referendum. Well, big deal. Who wouldn't support something going to a referendum? I mean, you know, if, if you're going to get all the entities uh, from the governing bodies together on this, then if it's something that's going to better the community, um, you know, and it's not going to be outrageously expensive, mm -hmm. um, why wouldn't someone just support it at the council level rather than governing by referendum? And, you know, it's very possible if it's not outrageously expensive that that's how it'll come down. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I guess we have to see what it is people want yeah. and what, what the cost is. If it's we just want streets, that should be in the budget anyway. Right. And, you know, so right. let's start looking at those streets. If it's mm -hmm. we want trees on every terrace or we want more flower beds or we want this or that, where's the parks budget? Let's start looking at, at, at what it is people are already paying taxes for and can there be shifts yeah. done to give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's something big... You know, I don't know, and I don't know, you know, we're in a kind of bad economy right now. <laughs> but maybe that would be shelved for a few years, yeah. but don't take it off the radar. Yeah, but maybe it off, happen. integrate it somehow. And once, once the economy recovers, there could be more philanthropic dollars that we can slide into the community. Mm -hmm. um, Some of the ideas in the, in the process were simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, just simple greenery, shrubs, a tree on a terrace. Sh um, Wider terraces. I mean, it was just really, mm -hmm. whoa. And when, when you saw it, it was like, you know, you saw what it looked like now, and all he did was just added a, a trees. Wow. I mean, how <laughs> simple. Mm -hmm. So some of it isn't mm -hmm. extremely expensive, mm -hmm. but others, I'm sure, I mean, we talked about the highways. We talked about gateways into the community. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Signage. street repair. I mean, that will be a major undertaking. Yeah. Well, since by the time this airs, the questionnaire will be, you know, the, the survey will be uh, completed and, mm -hmm. and the results going off to, uh, to Tony Nelson, um, what are some of the questions that were asked for benefit of the viewers who, who maybe didn't have an opportunity or who chose not to participate in the well, survey? Well, you know, some of the first questions, are you satisfied with the quality of life in Oshkosh? Mm -hmm. You know, that's... I think you could define what's your quality, um, but, you know, those kinds of questions. There were questions asked about um, health. You know, do you want this to be more of a healthy community? Do you want it to have more access to the river and the water? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how does that all fit? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of discussion about the downtown versus Highway 41. Mm -hmm. And what do you want your downtown to be? And, or do you not want it there anymore? I mean, basically, if, you know, if nobody really wants any money put into the downtown, then, it, you know, then, then I guess you know where the community is going versus the highway. If you're going to have it the highway, do you want it to be the box retail 
or do you want it to be something different than the box retail? So those are some of the things. Um, bike, do you want bike lanes mm -hmm. on your streets? Is that important to this community um, so people can get around by bikes? Do you want you know, bus lanes? Do you want, you know, so those kinds of things to kind of get a feel for what are people really wanting this community to end up being like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next 20 years. I remember when I took the survey, because we didn't have any prep to see what it was going to be. I mean, I felt they covered all aspects and things that you never really thought of. I mean, it wasn't a survey you could just mm -hmm. pop off like that. It, it actually went, whoa, I mean, where do I, you think? I, I never thought about it, mm -hmm. you know. So he really brought from the arts to schools to health to, mm -hmm. he, he really covered all aspects. and. You know, if you don't have a kid in elementary school, you really don't think about the elementary schools, but he made you think about it. So I, mm -hmm. I thought that was good. Mm -hmm. Did he, um, he, Tony wrote this uh, survey? I think he? he developed yes, the he whole. Developed it. Do you know offhand, uh, before he put it together, did he actually come here and spend time visiting? Oh, yes. D how, how <laughs> he was long here was in he March here for, <laughs> wow. for like mm -hmm. three days in okay. March. Um, and, and I know there was some criticism that some of the pictures he had taken, and then you show a pretty green picture, well, mm. the green picture is going to look much better. But he was here in March. And you know what March looks like in Wisconsin? Particularly yeah. this March. It was yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of snow, gray and snow. Was, yeah. um, so, you know, he went all over town, took mm. pictures of all kinds of things mm -hmm. to try to get a feel for really w what are the issues that affect this community. Yeah. So, yeah, he was here um, in the Valley three days, kind mm. of. He did his research. Yep. I'm going to play devil's advocate on a couple of questions. Yeah. Okay, cool. A <laughs> couple of neighbor, <laughs> couple sure. neighbor ladies went to this initial thing, mm -hmm. this where you had 160, 170. Okay, Hilton one. And uh, they have senses of humor. But one of the ladies said, you know, I've never seen so many middle-aged, bald, white males in all my life. <coughs> Another comment was there was no... I think the men are going to be offended by there, that. <laughs> were, there was no diversity. Uh, That's... They were, mm -hmm. they were the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant community mm -hmm. of Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. there, there were no Hmong people there. Correct. Uh, were there really many students there? This, w this was a business community. This was a, a vision of the business community, and the new parts in the, in the city weren't there. A response to that. Well, um, you're right. The, it was very white, and most things that happen in this community are very white. Okay. Um, and I think that the minorities in this community would say they don't feel welcome. Okay. Okay. Um, and they are not comfortable okay. going to that. So I, I'm not surprised that was the case. Okay. Um, I was. I, I would not say it was all business people by any okay. stretch. There were many people who were retired, mm -hmm. retired. Um, yes. and people who don't work, okay. and uh, you know, kind of a variety. A lot of. I was surprised how many people I did not know. Okay. You know, because I've met a lot of people in my ten years with the foundation, okay. um, and I was somewhat taken back by by the fact that, that there were a lot of different faces. And the same thing happened in the other two sessions that were held at the convention center. But uh, white, yeah, okay. it was. Another, another criticism? Oh, go ahead. Um, there were university students there. Okay. I actually sat at a table with four of them that okay. felt um, that they should be there. And I did, s I did see a lot of retired women okay. there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, like you said, when you go to meeting after meeting after meeting, you tend to see the same people. This was not, I mean, I, we okay. needed name tags. Okay. The blogs are hitting hard on the fact that these sessions that are coming up are all during regular working hours. There's no evening things at all. Oh, no, there, we did two evenings. Okay, but the ones coming, I think, are... Yeah, these are just... They're all, they're all mm -hmm. during the day. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the people ones are that will be over by the time this airs, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, but we sorry, did do yeah. two evening did ones. Did you? Okay. Yes. We yeah. did two evening ones mm -hmm. and two day ones. Right. The first one was scheduled for the day, and we, we did to hear the feedback. Okay. So then the next time he came back, we made sure we did some evening ones. Right. Okay. And the, the actual unveiling will be a 5.30 or 6 o'clock right. at night one. Um, you know, it's tough, and, and people say that, and they go, why don't you do a Saturday? And I'm like, well, Saturday in May or June in Wisconsin, when it's actually nice out, are we really going to get people right. to come? Are we better? Are we going to have a better chance during the week in the evening? You know, some people didn't sure. like, you know, some people don't want Thursday night, and some people don't want Wednesday night, oh, so it's kind of tough. And because we only had a limited amount of money, we had to cut back, you know, mm -hmm. some on both the visioning and the branding. So he couldn't be here 10 times. You know, he could only just come a few times. Now, these, we actually decided because we felt we needed more, we're doing them. <laughs> we're doing them anyway. ourselves. We're doing yeah. them ourselves. We've uh -huh. got his PowerPoint, and we're just, we're going to do it. Okay. We, you know, I've been through the survey. I think we can just handle clicking um, huh. for people. <laughs> so do you like that or not? <laughs> you know, but we've had um, the response for the bodies that were in the building was far, there were far more people during the day than at night. 
Yes, by far. I was very surprised at night. We we had the entire convention center ready to go. We didn't even we didn't even have 100 people there. Mm -hmm. And, and like you said, it may be tougher as the weather starts That's getting nicer. We've done it bar games all over easier. the place, <laughs> yeah. soccer games, uh, you know, right. what have you. So, um, okay. So, even though the results of the survey uh, haven't been, you know, released to anyone mm -hmm. yet, they're still in Zoomerang or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, cyberspace, <laughs> cyberspace somewhere. Um, People, I'm sure, have talked to you each about certain things, certain aspects of this or whatever, maybe just in passing, shared with you something. Um, what have you heard from people, if anything, so far, about what they'd like to see um, happen to their community? I know one of the first days when um, I, I was a facilitator on one of the first ones, so I got to walk around mm -hmm. and actually, <coughs> I, I couldn't believe the diverse response. And you kind of sit at a table where people you're comfortable with, so it was like one table had, where they were just on a tangent about um, sewers and street <laughs> repair. And, sp and you got to even take this map and do specific street repairs. I mean, name the streets. What's the problem? So that, they were off on that. And then the other group over here was completely talking about um, highway, the 41 corridor and, and the empty big lot. I mean, so it was kind of what, wherever you went, everybody had a passion. But I, I'm so curious to see if this all comes works. together. And, and I think what I've heard, um, if there's any consensus, is um, they people like much more of a green community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More trees, more flowers, more, you know, the like Jackson Street where it's just mm -hmm. a big old street, you know. Can you have some trees in the middle of that in a median or something? I mean, you, you have a lot of that discussion going on. I think, I, I think it's going to come up water. The whole water. riverfront development is going to be a priority. Mm -hmm. Restaurants, living on, activities mm -hmm. on, and I think green's going to be an activity. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. As a, as a tourist perspective, mm -hmm. you come into our community from one of the major gateways, mm -hmm. um, and let's just pick on um, out by the prison. What is that, 45? Okay. Mm -hmm. You come in there. And oh, that that's where you come into the community. Mm -hmm. And then really until you hit into deep into Jackson, I mean, you have a dump. You know, you have a prison. Mm -hmm. You have uh, that's 76. a dirt bike road trail. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's, that's first impression mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of a visitor in this community. And again, so when Tony did the drive around, he came into the gateways and, you know, he makes note of. Mm -hmm. And first impressions are, yeah. are a lot. Not only if you want to visit here, but you want to live here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, you know, that was uh, interesting. And s most of us live here, so we're not leaving and then coming back in. You just kind of take that scenery for granted. But think about that. Well, and we don't look at it with an outsider's eyes either. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes that's not good, and sometimes it's very good. And in this case, it's probably very good because mm -hmm. you are seeing things that none of us necessarily see. Well, you're used to it. Or you're, you're paying right, attention, right. you know. When we drove in from Idaho, yeah, I thought 21 would never end from <laughs> <laughs> Toma, Toma Tosh, Yeah, and it's just straight, too. Uh, yeah. Two lanes, trucks, mm -hmm. fishermen with lights that aren't working on their trailers. <laughs> I yeah, thought, yeah. God, how long is it going to take yeah. the Tosh guy? <laughs> but, um, you know, it's taught me to look at things different. I, I was just in Crystal City for a meeting, and I was amazed when I walked on the streets. Oh, my God, look at the flower beds. Oh, my God, look at the trees. Look at what developers have done where there's a business mm -hmm. park or building. And... I swear, 12 feet bef from the street before you hit that parking lot, all green mm -hmm. and flowers and mm -hmm. beautiful. And, of course, mm -hmm. it was April and things hadn't really sprung mm -hmm. here yet, so yeah. it probably looked a little better anyway. But Not this year. you start really paying attention to that going, and really, what would it take? Yeah. I mean, if we had every student plant 10 trees before they graduated high school, yeah. I, what would that really take? Yeah. Well, let's talk about the branding part of this a little bit mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about visioning. Um, what is the branding component to this? We wanted to give this some time to settle in, so we um, did another RFP because some of the, the um, steering committee members are passionate about vision and some are passionate about branding. So mm -hmm. we were clearly split, so we decided we had to do it together. And we still have, you know, some people still use the wave, some people still Oshkosh on the water. Mm -hmm. Um, EAA has taken a major part, truck, and I think everybody's doing something, but nobody's doing it together. Mm -hmm. um, we've modified the wave, you know, nobody's patented Oshkosh on the water anymore. We let that go. So we decided to um, back this up. Now we've got a vision, we've got the community together, and now we're going to kick off a branding. We, we hope to start that in September. 
Um, we have a gentleman, actually he's from Australia. Um, New eyes. <laughs> yeah, he, um, again, he has come highly recommended and mm -hmm. um, he's, he's been monitoring what we're doing okay. with the visioning and it, the visioning has taken a little bit longer. We don't want to hurry anything, okay. so he's patiently waiting. But we're going to kick off on what, what's our logo, what's our brand, wh what are we going to call ourselves. And so you see this replacing the other ones that are here already? That's our intent. That's your intent. That's our intent. Okay. And we all are uniform. Okay. And really the branding too is for a lot of the external people who uh -huh. are coming into our community where the visioning is definitely okay. internal sure. to people in the community. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of two oh, different populations. Oh. Okay. But if we are going to be Oshkosh on the water, let's just say, yeah. then let's be Oshkosh on the water. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then let's get our brand, let's yeah. get our logo, let's, you be Oshkosh, your yeah. show would be that, my tourism, everybody would incorporate that at some okay. point. And that has really went away. Mm -hmm. And okay. so that's what we wanted to okay. bring back. And then it would also help us too with, then we developed the riverfront. Because people are going to come to here because we're Oshkosh on the water. That's they right. need to be able to get to the water. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, they right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So I, I know Dan had a couple questions for you specifically <laughs> on a different <laughs> issue. But better I, just, for so I, long. I, I just want to wrap this up real quickly. So uh, June twenty second. Uh huh. Monday night, June twenty second. At. From five o'clock to eight o'clock. Five to eight. At the convention center. Okay. That's when the visioning. Results will be unveiled, correct? correct? And then from there, where do you go? The steering committee will put together a plan to determine how we how we work with the city. Which pieces are city pieces? I mean, which pieces are tourism pieces? Which pieces are philanthropic? Mm -hmm. And so we'll kind of start putting that piece together, and and hopefully there's something clear that the community mm -hmm. wants. Okay. I mean, as I said, mm -hmm. maybe nothing will come of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they all decide they love being here, and there's yeah. nothing that needs yeah. to change. He okay. said to us. Um, be careful of the results too. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you know you're going to ask. Yeah. Be, be careful, careful what you wish be for. Be careful right? what you wish yeah. for. Because yeah. they could say we don't want anything to change. Yeah. And y y then you have to accept it. Yeah. yeah. You know. It'll wasn't be hard, a, but we'll do wasn't it. Wasn't a very inspiring vision, was it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've only got about a minute, Dan. Okay. okay. So go uh, for it. You were on the board of regents. Correct. All right. What do you tell parents <laughs> and prospective students that every biennium student tuition goes up and up and up? It, will it ever end? No. No. <laughs> there we go. Are, you, are we finished? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready for that. <laughs> no, I don't think it will ever end because yeah. GPR dollars at one time funded 75% of the UW system in yeah. Wisconsin. They now fund about 24%. Okay. And as we go into this next budget, it's probably going to go down to 20. Well, h how are you going to pay for this? There are auxiliary that pays for about a third. There are federal grants that pay for a portion. Tuition is a big piece of this. Yeah. There's no way around it. Wisconsin is still one of the lowest, best deals around okay. uh, for one of the top quality universities uh, anywhere. And yeah, tuition's going to continue to go up. I wish that wasn't the case. Yeah. I wish we could say we can get GPR dollars up here, but yeah. we all know where the economy is, where the state is, and the legislature just keeps pushing yeah. it back. Faculty and salaries are down in the C minus category. Absolutely. Yeah. It's horrible. And we've lost great talent mm -hmm. from the state of Wisconsin because of it. And uh, again, you know, I have to go back. The legislature or the governor or somebody has to get serious and say this is extremely important that our kids are educated, that we have baccalaureates in those kids' pockets, mm -hmm. and that we can help raise the state of Wisconsin through economic development because we have kids with baccalaureates. And until that happens. Okay. I'm All glad right. I asked those questions. Okay, okay. very Great good. Answers. Thanks to both of you for being here. Yes, we want to have you back you. As, as this starts to... We want to be back. <laughs> All right, excellent. <laughs> we'll do it. We're going to take a very short break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by Dori Wilner. She is the uh, Community Programs Coordinator with the Oshkosh Police Department. We'll be right back. Nice. Dear Mom and Dad, well, I finally have some time off, so I'm writing to tell you that I'm doing well. We have good days and bad days over here. We try to remember the good ones and get through the bad ones. Mostly we have each other, and that's what keeps us going. And mom, since you asked, if anyone wants to help, just tell them to contact the USO. You can't believe how much they do for us. With love, your son, Michael. Every year, the US Department of the Treasury receives about 1.4 million reports of problems with paper checks. Checks can be lost, stolen, or delayed. If you still receive Social Security payments by paper check, Treasury wants you to know about a safer, more convenient way to get your money. The Direct Express Prepaid Debit MasterCard. 
The Direct Express card is new and is available to anyone receiving Social Security benefits, even if you don't have a bank account. Your monthly benefits will be automatically placed onto your card account each month on the day your money is due. While other debit cards cost money, it is possible to use the Direct Express card for free to make purchases, pay bills, and get cash at thousands of locations nationwide. There are no sign-up or monthly account fees. No more waiting for the mail or worrying about lost or stolen checks. Call 1-877-212-9991 or visit www.usdirectexpress.com. If we were in an emergency situation, we don't have extra. We have a little bit of water and a little bit of food. A meeting no. place, no. No. I don't think we have a first aid kit. We have tuna fish, we have right. beans, we so. have um, um, canned beans. tomatoes, true. you know. That's true, but uh, that's really not survival food. Tomato we, paste. Yeah, well, oh. yeah, right? Welcome back to the second half of Ion Oshkosh. We're pleased now to be joined by uh, Dory Wilner. As I mentioned before the break, Dory is the Community Programs Coordinator with the Oshkosh Police Department. Um, primarily, we're going to be talking about National Night Out and uh, mm -hmm. the Oshkosh National Night Out. And then if we have a little time toward the end, we'll talk about some other things that OPD has coming up uh, now that we're moving into summer. But mm -hmm. uh, thanks for being here. Yes, we, thank we you. Appreciate Welcome. it. Um, I, I've got um, National Night Out. We've got it uh, being promoted currently on our website. Site. Um, it's been up there since uh, since we got the press release from you a few weeks ago already. <laughs> yeah. So so we're we're getting the word out there there. But wanted to have you on the show to talk about it too. Um, you know now this one Dory is coming up on August fourth, and our local one takes place in South Park. Um, of course, we'll get into a few more details later about it. But tell us about National Night Out. How did it come to be? What's what's it all about? Okay. Um, it's an interesting event. This will be our third annual, so we haven't been doing this forever. It's relatively new. Um, it actually came out of the National Town Watch Association, which we call uh, neighborhood watches here in town. Okay. And um, it was promoted, actually, Sue Keplinger from the uh, City Planning Department uh, found out about it, involved some of our officers. Uh, we we're just kind of launching a couple, three years ago, our team policing and uh, initiative and she invited us to get involved with her in the planning and um, then after that first year kind of moved to the department and this year it's there and we're hoping that it expands back in the planning part to the community mm -hmm. okay so um, the event is national it's celebrated the same night everywhere in the country Canada all of Northern America wow. uh, North America um, there's over, uh, nearly, there were 16,000 communities that celebrated this event the same night wow. last year. And um, the whole f purpose is really to strengthen the community, um, heighten crime prevention awareness, and for community to unify against um, crime. Mm -hmm. uh, people to kind of take back their neighborhood, to mm -hmm. be active and outside, and uh, to let people know that crime isn't okay in their neighborhood. How does it differ from, uh, you, you said take back their neighborhood, how does it differ from take back the night? That's more geared toward women. Uh, take back the night women, is specifically right? a domestic violence, uh, violent, uh, domestic violence uh, sexual assault okay. uh, awareness All right. event, and that's in October. And, and this is, this is, this encompasses everything. Everything, yeah. right, okay. right. Has it been, uh, I realize that you've only got, a, you know, two past years to right. really kind of gauge, but right. has it been well attended in the past? It has. Mm -hmm. We were surprised. Uh, the first year, uh, the Boys and Girls Club hosted us. They had their new teen center, mm -hmm. so we had it out there. But it was 104 degrees that day. Mm -hmm. And so the attendance, we had about 150 mm -hmm. people, mostly people who could walk over. Mm -hmm. um, the second year, last year, we moved it to South Park, and we think we had 650 oh, or wow. 700 mm -hmm. people at the event. It's probably one of the very few alcohol-free events in the summer in the community and we think that has something to do with the popularity mm -hmm. it's very family friendly there were a number of elderly people there brought grandkids people felt very safe about coming to it without having to deal with you know anybody mm -hmm. who might have been angry or belligerent <laughs> or uh, <laughs> rowdy whatever <laughs> we had a good time but um it was it was uh it was uh, very uh, well attended in that regard so we almost tripled our attendance well 
cooler weather maybe yeah. had a little something oh, to do with it. Oh, the venue had, it was perfect. It uh -huh. was a 75 degree yeah, yeah. balmy sun out. Yeah. You know, it was a beautiful day. But, but you know, I, I'm wondering if, you know, obviously, as you well know, we now have a, a new chief. Yes. And um, he's very much on team policing, um, community policing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that maybe factored into having those kinds of, of uh, outstanding results your second year as opposed to the first? Well, I think, you know, the, the year that he came into office or his position, um, he was out in the community a lot talking to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, I think, did 30 or 40 public, you mm -hmm. know, presentations. And I think, um, I don't know if National Night Out was on his agenda every time he spoke, but I think the department um, would just seem more approachable to the community. People mm -hmm. were curious about what was going on, and I think that made a difference. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's been, I think, very good for the community. And I think this community policing has been a big success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, we see it's going to, depending on, you know, um, the Near East, Northeast neighborhood is, you know, denser, and there's more going on, and, um, you know, it's easier to get groups of people going from than the west side where people are more spread out in their neighborhoods and there's mm -hmm. more, you know, rural area yet. But um, in each part of the city, our seven patrol areas, we've seen a growth in neighborhood watch mm -hmm. groups, um, people contacting the department. We now have a, a newsletter going out to every team area. You can subscribe to a newsletter and mm -hmm. that goes out every two weeks. So uh, we're trying to be more, uh, we've more accessible and in, in a mm -hmm in a friendly, proactive way. And, and about that, I, mm -hmm. I'm getting those newsletters, mm -hmm. are you? You are, yeah. Um, you know, I, I have to say, now some of the officers who send those out, they're just very <laughs> cut and dried, straightforward, whatever. Right. Um, but there, there is, uh, is one in particular. Um, and, you know, he's, I, I look forward to getting his, and he's mm -hmm. not in my little team area, mm -hmm. but I, I enjoy getting his because he talks about what he and his wife are doing, and, <laughs> and he talks about their little doodle dog, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just, it's, it's nice to see, you know, some people may think that's kind of cheesy or whatever, but, you know, it's nice to see officers mm -hmm. acting like the human beings that they are it and people the seeing them yeah. as a person, huh? right, right, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, I mean, it's yeah. just, it, and that's not a knock on those who don't do no. that. No. It's just nice to see mm -hmm. right. that he is doing that. And, and I think a couple others are, are trying that too. Police so. officers have personalities. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, well, yeah. families, they, all you know, they live and cut yeah. their grass and do yeah. all the same things we do, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, and they have, you know, certainly w in the line of duty and they're, you know, they're professional and they do the job they have to do, but in terms of communicating with the public, they're anxious to build relationships mm -hmm. with people too because it makes their job easier. Absolutely. You, know. um, uh, you brought a folder. Uh, does that talk about, uh, you know, th that probably talks about the campaign nationally. Right, right, right. What, if, if someone's going to this Dory, um, you know, in uh, August, uh, and again, it's August 4th. Right, a Tuesday night. Um, what kinds of things go on there? Yeah, what, what's what the kinds agenda? Of things can right. they see yeah. or do? Um, last year, uh, we really expanded uh, because we had the park, and it was wonderful. Um, we had a three-on-three -three basketball tourna tournament. Uh, the, some college students, the women's basketball team, came over and, and ran a tournament for kids just hmm. to come in and hmm. play. We had volunteers who loved to fish help kids fish all evening in the mm. pond out there. The prison donated from their worm farm all the, fi all the worms mm. we used. Wow. And we had, we borrowed poles from DNR and we had the poles busy all night long. 24 poles were in the water all night long. Do you uh, need a fishing <laughs> license for that? Uh, no, because it's okay. kids. It's okay. kids only and all they're right. all under 16. Okay. So okay. that's fine. It's, we didn't let the adults because the kids were lined up, you know. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, you can't show up. Oh, right, 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 right. Right. Uh, we had in the pavilion, we had a band from the campus who uh, basically donated their time that evening, uh, City Alive. Um, we had free food, um, Bex and uh, Festival and a couple other partners donated food, Perkins and Shane Burgers. And so we had free food for most of the evening. We had uh, fraternal or service clubs cook for us. Uh, we had door prizes and then we had a community resource area out in the grass, mm -hmm. the library, the Humane Society, mm -hmm. Red Cross, um, in all just big grassy area. We had a coloring station for kids. We had a dunk tank. Um, and then we had uh, kind of a demonstration area uh, where uh, we had things like build your own um, disaster preparedness kit for your house. Uh, we had field games like relay races and uh, face painting, wow. hair coloring. Um, 
Uh, just so you just had a gamut of activities. Uh, violin I, players, okay. martial arts demonstrations, all okay. those kinds of I things. I guess we're yeah. showing photos here. I didn't oh, realize that we were yeah. showing them. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I the we're going to talk yeah. about that. Right, yeah. right. Um, okay. What are we looking at here, Dory? Um, this, these are just some shots from, um, you know, we had, of course, the, uh, the whole initiative is around law enforcement. So we had um, our squad car open for kids to um, sit in and okay. use the microphone and Here's you know, another one maybe want to come um, Our SWAT team, um, the crisis response team was <coughs> out and they, uh, any of the kids who wanted to try on all the equipment, which is about 50 pounds worth of stuff, okay. uh, tried this stuff on and most of it was, uh, you know, the kids kind of drowned <laughs> in, in this stuff, the helmets and the vests and all that kind okay, of stuff, so that up. was fun. Um, and they all enjoy just under try just learning okay, about the weight of stu one. of stuff. The fire department is a big piece of this. John mm -hmm. Holland is a, a great the, f the community educator. Miss Lakeshore was there signing autographs, and kids got a chance to um, experience what it's like to you know hold the fire hoses and go in the ambulance. And they had a number of uh, rescue uh, equipment pieces out, all their heavy equipment. So they were out there, and kids love to look at all that stuff. So that was fun. I'm sure if something else is coming up. Okay. It's coming. Hold yep. on. It's yep. a fishing, I'll bet. Oh, yeah. It's fishing That's is coming. One. Yeah. And here's that, uh, that uh, the people in green shirts are volunteers, mm -hmm. and uh, kids just waited in line to uh, be able to wet a line, and uh, the volunteers helped um, put hooks, uh, fish, uh, worms on hooks and take okay. fish off. And what was interesting was there were a number of single moms who came up to the volunteers and said, my son would really like to fish, has never been able to. I don't know anything about it. Could he try, would you help him? Uh -huh. So there are a lot of uh, people, families uh, who just their kids fished for the first time that night. Yeah, and, and well, you know, there's, there's nothing more frustrating than fishing and not catching anything. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how well uh, stocked or, or, you know, right. how, how many fish are in that area, but do they stock it at all uh, um, before this event? They did the front pond uh, earlier okay. in the summer, but then one of the volunteers who, one of the college students went and kind of scouted it, and we found that there were little fish in the big pond, okay. so we used the big pond for the venue. So, okay. Yeah. Now, I, th I think we've got something Maybe else one here. More I think we have one more. Oh, photo here's come. the chief in the dunk tank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What I love is the look on that girl's face yeah, because she, must she, have got him, she huh? knows she dunked the chief. And so, uh, yeah, he, he was in. He was there each. Uh, we had a uh, city council, a couple of city council members, the mayor, the chief pastor from the church, which is right across the street, uh, as a neighbor to the park, uh -huh. and um, and the chief. And uh, it was great. Uh, he enjoyed it, and, and kids love. And our volunteers let them throw the ball until they dunk somebody. So oh, well, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> what, are, what are the hours of this? Does it run all day? Or? Uh, no, 4 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. So we're really gone before. I mean, we, we close before it gets dark. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Are these events, uh, Dory, typically run by the police department, or are they run by cities like ours started out to be initially, um, sort of? Both, uh, or I guess both of those uh, models, but there's also some where neighborhood watches take over the responsibility for planning. Mm -hmm. A community like um, Menominee Falls, for instance, they um, organized neighborhood watch block parties all over the community, and the police and fire go to those p parties and just visit. Okay. So they kind of just do, uh, do the route for the evening. Uh, other cities, like uh, the bigger cities, St. Paul, Los Angeles, uh, they, the police department is a major planner, but they bring in um, civilians, you know, uh, mm -hmm. citizens to help with the planning. So um, we would really, like I said, like to move to that model where citizens would take over the planning of the event or at least do satellite events going on. If, if people can't come down, because 65,000 people can't fit in the park, mm -hmm. but we'd like the whole city, um, you could organize your neighbors, um, maybe a block walk, and everybody turn their porch lights on when it gets dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you could do that. We would like to do, we've proposed a neighbor of the year kind of recognition mm -hmm. where any neighborhood or community within a neighborhood, you know, community is defined lots of different ways, um, they could nominate a neighbor of the year and that person will be recognized that night. So, okay. um, you know, there's lots of ways to be involved, and um, we just kind of want to focus on that night and that time frame, and people participate in any way they can or want to. H have you all talked to, um, you know, Sue Keplinger um, in the planning department, uh, community development department, about, you know, kind of maybe taking some of the reins of this back, or um, not so much? No, I think, um, we haven't. She, she's supportive and she makes contacts for us with things, but I think, you know, their focus is more in the 
the planning piece or this is more the action piece mm -hmm. and we just mm -hmm. you know she would help in any way I think she could but they have less staff mm -hmm. and I, I've been fortunate to have a summer intern who's helped with mm -hmm. this in the past couple years. So. City clearly is moving towards those neighborhoods that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It might be a little too early for a neighbor to take it over but clearly the you know, the plan of the city is to have these active neighborhoods, right, which right. kind of fits your idea of having right. different neighborhoods hosting. Right. Yeah. We do have a hundred, about a hundred active neighborhood watch groups right now okay. in the community, and but they vary. Some meet once a year, uh -huh. some meet, um, you know, once a month. Yeah. And they go it to really Webster depends Stanley on Elementary oh. School, and they have them all the time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They do. That yeah. whole uh, Oak Street yep. Grove area yep. has a real active yep. group. So there, it just depends on who, you know, which neighborhood and mm -hmm. what the issues are. Some people just like to know who's new in the neighborhood and other people are addressing an issue every month, so. Well, you know, maybe the, uh, the team leaders, mm -hmm. team sergeants, whatever right. the, I, I've seen different names of what they're calling themselves on these newsletters, but maybe, maybe each team captain, if you will, from mm -hmm. the police department could work with some of the neighborhood watches in their area mm -hmm. and, you know, plan a piece here and there right. and, and then kind of bring it all together. Right, that's what we're doing. Uh, this uh, South Park Falls in Team 4, so we're, we did a special invitation, a letter to that group, that area, who's ever active, saying, this is happening in your <laughs> neighborhood. Uh, Please come help. on out, <laughs> you know, uh, n nominate somebody from your area. Uh, we did uh, leaflet um, all the houses around the park last year so they knew that this was happening that night and invited them over and we, you know we tried to like I said the church is right across the street their um, South Park school is there we invited them to come over and participate in a special way if they wanted to and you know be a neighbor to the park you know to this event so we're okay. to carry is it going thing. back to South Park again? it is, it is. Okay. right right it's just such a good place oh, I understand. they redid the pavilion there this year they painted put a new roof on so that's spiffed up and yeah. we'll be happy and it's just in the splash pad is there the tennis courts are there sure. the basketball courts I mean perfect venue for the horseshoe this. pits yep yep that too so. yeah yeah it's perfect um okay have we Missed anything on Oshkosh National Night Out, or um, have we touched the... I just want to, I guess, say that we did have a lot of good sponsors. We had 23 sponsors, people who donated things, businesses and organizations, money, in-kind things. And then we had 18 agencies participate last year okay. with display or an activity. Mm -hmm. So um, if uh, anybody wants to be involved that wasn't or, you know, that we, we missed them or something, we... Just contact me or Officer Nichols. Joe Nichols is our public information officer, our crime prevention officer now. Um, and both of us are working on this. And uh, so uh, get involved in some way if you'd like, you know. When you talk about agencies being involved, um, Dory, what, what, like what kinds of agencies... Um, I'm sure the sheriff's department's probably involved. Well, the they're, fire they're sending their canine unit this year. Yeah. Um, what other kinds of agencies have been involved in the past? Red Cross was there, like I said. They helped. Okay. Uh, they had a little a pile of stuff on a table and some information. What would constitute a fa your family disaster kit? Okay. And so right, then gotcha. people pulled mm -hmm. things. So those um, are agencies. AmeriCorps was about. there. They oh. were recruiting members for their program mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Uh, the blood community blood mobiles there. They do a blood drive that night. They bring the big bus out, uh -huh. um, and we had the library there, the Humane Society, um, Family Connection had information. You know, uh, they hosted uh, some uh, activities for the kids, and then we had just uh, volunteers come out and help with the activities. Uh -huh. so, okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Is there no speaker or anything for this? Uh, mm -mm, we try to keep it kind of well, just summer. Casual. Let them do whatever they want. Right. Yeah. The chief did welcoming the mayor did some opening okay. remarks gordon hintz was there for us um and they welcomed everybody kind of okay. kicked the evening off and then we just went on we had music for a couple hours and no it's pretty it's just yeah. like a big picnic really and but a skit or a play would have potential in the future absolutely yeah. yeah we had some violinists from the suzuki program come over and okay. they played and so anybody oh yeah absolutely any we'd fit anything yeah. in that all right. So would like. I guess the general rule of thumb here is if if you want to be involved in it, give you or um, Officer Joe Nichols a call. Right. And yeah. You guys will find a way to make it fit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You'll Lots find a way to yeah. fit a square peg into a round <laughs> hole if you need to, right? If it's free, we'll make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good. So, again, that is um, August 4th, and you said that's a Tuesday? Tuesday night. Okay, yeah. from 4 mm -hmm. to 8 p.m. at South Park. Right. And um, if you want to find out more information about it, you can either check out our website, ionoshkosh.com, or ionoshkosh.blogspot.com. 
oshkoshpd.com, or you can just go to um, oshkoshpd.com, uh, right. and we've been putting that up throughout the uh, throughout the half hour as well. Good. So, uh, real quickly then, with time running out, uh, we've got about uh, two and a half minutes left. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what other things are coming up uh, in the relatively near future? Um, our big one of our big summer safety uh, is Safety City. It's okay. for four to seven year olds, okay. uh, four to nine year olds, I'm sorry. We expanded okay. it last year. Uh, we're serving our over a thousandth group of kids this year. Since we started the program, we've a thousand little kids have gone through this program. Okay. And so that starts June 15th. Okay. The slots are filling up, uh, but they can still get kids in. It's, uh, okay. There is a fee for that program. It's four half days um, of safety information okay. for little kids. So that's a neat thing coming up. On June 23rd, we have our second annual um, senior, well, mature driver safety program. Uh. It's not just seniors, mature drivers. We're doing that in conjunction with um, AAA, ARP, uh, the Senior Center, of course, a big partner, and um, the Affinity Health, um, where we hold an event at the Senior Center and go through a checklist so that senior drivers are using all the safety features in their car correctly, the seat's the right height, they're the right distance from the steering wheel, and then we're doing a simple under the hood. How do you open your hood? Mm. How do you check your air in your tires? Mm. Um, has nothing to do with drive a driving assessment. Uh -huh. It's simply, if you're driving, use your car as safely as you can. Mm. And uh, the police actually aren't, aren't there. We are helping organize the event, but it has nothing to do with taking away keys or things that people <laughs> might be worried about at that age. So Nobody's no. going to yank your driver's no. license no. when you walk in the parking lot where, and drive Where are both <laughs> these summer events held at? Safety City is held at Fox Valley Technical College. Okay. And we set up a miniature city and okay. kids, you know, learn how to be uh, pedestrians and drivers, bicyclists. Okay. And then the other event is at the Senior Center North Annex, okay. the Annex building. We actually okay. use the city garage that's under cover. We drive through. Okay. And we set up uh, a drive through uh, assessment center mm -hmm. for them. Very good. Okay. Yeah, All right, it's fine. Um, do you have times um, on any of these other two things here, Dory? The, um, the Safety City, as I mentioned, starts June 15th mm -hmm. and runs for seven weeks, and it's either half day morning or half day afternoon. It changes and they every take week. Their, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. right. So you only go for four days, but it's different times. Okay. And then the Mature Driver Program, CarFit, it's called, CarFit. Okay. is um, actually June 23rd from 8 a.m. to 8 12 noon. 8 a.m. to 12 noon. And they can okay. call the Senior Center for a reservation because it's okay. about an hour appointment. Okay, and so are, re are reservations needed no, or recommended? Suggested. Yeah, okay. recommended. Suggested. All right. yeah. Okay. okay, very yeah. good. Yeah, thank wow, you. we crammed a lot into yeah. like 25 yeah. minutes or so. But <laughs> thank great. you very much for being You're here. You're welcome. I'd love good to have you back thank when you. other Be things here. come up. Thank so. you. All right. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, thanks to our guests from uh, earlier in the half hour, Wendy Hillsburg and um, um, Eileen Conley Kiesler, and uh, thanks to the crew and Dan and uh, to all of you at home. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh. <laughs>